of thanksgiving I will bless the old Lord I will bless. I will bless the O Lord. I will bless. I will bless the O Lord. I will bless the O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the O Lord. I will bless. I will bless the O Lord.
what God designed me to be. Come on, just declare it. I, I am. I am. What God? What God designed me to be. Come on, just speak it over your house right now. Say, I am. I am. I am. What God? What God? Oh, you are, you are. Tell somebody you are. Say, you are what God designed you to be. God has something in store for you. Say, you are what God you to be. Last time, say, I am. Come on, give God a hand of praise right now. Come on, if you believe what God says is yours, it's yours. Put your hands together right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I am what God designed. To be. Say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. One more time, say thank you. Thank you. Like you mean it, say thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. One more time, say thank you, Lord. Come on, 
Somebody ought to have a grateful heart and say it. And in that day, shall ye say, praise the Lord. I'm back. Couldn't stop. I got into it last week. Couldn't finish it. Didn't want to rush through it because I want you to get it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I want you to be able to speak the word of the Lord that's going to bring salvation and redemption. I want to say that <clears throat> the final decision that on the fourth Sunday, which is two Sundays from now, next Sunday I'm going to be preaching on the God of COVID-19 
and then the following Sunday, our wonderful music ministry is going to be ministering in song to you for the entire one hour with choir, solos, whatever they have decided to do to minister to your spirit man. Once again, if you have just been saved the last two years, I want you to uh, call, call the office, sign up, because we want to start a new convert class and get you rooted <clears throat> and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching in the Cleveland area at Mega Church, there's a foundation class. We are not shut in or sheltered in place there in Cleveland. We're having church and uh, coming. And, and it's amazing that the people are coming there. Of course, the state of Ohio is not like the state of Missouri. The numbers are going up. We're spiking here. Sometimes we are greater than other times. But nonetheless, we are practicing safety first. We are scheduled to schedule, tentatively scheduled to reopen September 13th. If it's not safe, we won't. If it is, we will. Always stay tuned. Go to our website online. All the information is there to let you know or call here at uh, San Fran office, 314-388-3300. If you're in Cleveland, 216-741-0047. Both churches <clears throat> will accommodate you, pray for you, whatever you need. There's prayer going on in this church every day. Elders are ministering the word of God every day at Mega. And so... COVID hasn't shut us totally out, but certainly has not shut us up. We're still talking. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, this word will continue to evolve and open in the hearts of your people. Let us see what times we're in. We need to know the time that we're in. Thank you that you have put us in a place and sat us down so that we're not running anymore through the church and with our tambourine in our hand and beating each other over the head and whatnot. You're setting us down so that we can hear what it is that the Spirit is saying unto the church. Now anoint me, your servant, to preach nothing but your word. I cancel out anything that comes to my mind that is not like you and that would discredit your anointing. And I pray that you shall anoint me so that the anointing will break the yokes of tradition, of thinking, of thoughts, that are going on in the hearts of your people, things that have been set up in them that is not of you, cancel it out and be glorified through this time that we've come together. Everyone who is listening, I pray that you will cover them with your crimson rope, your blood. Let it hang on their homes, bringing deliverance to them and keeping them. Now unto him who is able. Now unto him who is able. To keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before his presence. With exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty. Dominion and power. Both now and forevermore. The church says. Amen. Revelation 12. I'm going to let you read Revelation 22, but I'm going to read Revelation 12 again, and we're going to start there and pick up where we left off last Sunday. 
This is the gospel of the red dragon. Revelation 12, 7, and there was war in heaven. You do know that there's a war in heaven, war in the, in the heavenlies. Let me, oh my God, I don't want to get stuck. But I'm going to prove to you right now that there's a war in heaven. Where is your heaven? Where is your heaven? Where is your heaven? Your heaven's right here. This is your heaven. This is the top of you, the height of you, the high part of you. War in heaven. There's a battleground right here. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Woo! Right here. You've got battles going on in your mind. There's a war in heaven. Let me go on. That's a nugget. It won't cost you anything. You don't have to send any money for that. There's a war in heaven. Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. There's a war with the angelic host of heaven and the dragon and his angels. And the dragon and his angels waged war and they were not strong enough. Hallelujah. You can praise right there. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down out of the heavenlies, where? To the earth realm. The serpent of old is called the devil and Satan. That's who we're dealing with, who deceives the whole world. Now notice that, who deceives the whole world. There's going to be, and there is happening right now, a deception that's going throughout the world. And the world is more susceptible to believing lies than believing the truth. Oh, can that be so also of believers, Christendom, the church? I think so. I hear many of our evangelical ministries upholding things in our nation that is totally against the will of God, totally against the word of God. There's a war going on, but the enemy is taking control of not only the world, but is getting in the mind of some of the church. Hmm, think about it. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Revelation 22, you read it on your own. Because if I get backed up there, I won't go forward. When I was talking about and started talking about the Chinese president, President Xi, who announced that Christendom and those who are worshiping Christ don't do that anymore. People who are worshiping Christ in China right now are losing benefits, health care. They're being forced out of their homes. Pastors' doors are being closed. They're taking pictures that represent Jesus Christ down and putting Mao Zedong there or President Xi there. And they're being told, this is who you worship, one or the other. This is the day that we're living in. If you don't believe it, you like Google, Google it up. Google it. I gave you the headlines last week and maybe we can give it to you again. China orders Christians to renounce faith. Just, just Google that. Just Google that. China orders Christians to renounce faith. And see what comes up. Don't want to hang there. I want to go on down. We're talking about man is man, God is God, but yet man is not satisfied with being man. But he wants diligently to become God striving to become something he cannot be. You will turn into a turtle before you become God. Try that. Try that. You, 
your face with all of its makeup will look like a baboon before you become God. It is absolutely insane and it's insanely impossible to think that you and I made men, created as a man, created in our humanity, can become divinity to the point that we can be worshipped and praised and lauded and applauded and bowed to and reverenced. Are you crazy? I preached the message 20 years ago, you've got to be crazy. <laughs> oh, let me move on. President Xi is not the first human in the, in the world to want worship. He's not the first person in the world to, to ascribe to it and say, this is what I want from all of you. I pray that they're not pastors that you're worshiping. This has been a time that we've seen the removal of bishops and pastors. Churches left without leaders. I pray that those churches who are void of leaders at this time, that they're able to go on and strive and press because they've got a relationship, a working relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Man was never intended to be worshipped. I don't care what your title is. Never intended to be worshipped. Worship God. And him only shalt thou serve. But here's a man in China. A man that represents the red dragon. He and his country saying, let's not worship Jesus anymore, but let's worship our presidents. Is he the first? No. Not only Lucifer, but we come to Neb Nebuchadnezzar. That's where we were last, last week, and I want to pick up there. I read chapter 4, verses 19 through 22. Daniel said to him, O king, you are a tree. You have become great. <clears throat> your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky, and your dominion extends to distant part of the earth. Let me, let me say to you, let me say to you and hear me, that there are some people who cannot stand to be blessed. You can't stand to have more than a jalopy because if you got a new car, you'd go the opposite way from the church. Keep the jalopy and you can, uh, praise the Lord, I'm coming. God knows who to bless and he knows who to keep the blessing from just a little bit longer. He can't give you a house. It's, am it's amazing what we can get that will lift us to become something that we're not. It's amazing how differently you strut with a new suit versus how you strutted in overalls. Amazing. Something that is materialistic, something that's not going to last, something you can strike a match to that will burn instantly. Oh, it elevates our mind. We want to become more than we are. It's a spirit that's in the world. And we've got to guard ourselves that the spirit is not in the church. So let's move from Daniel 4 on down the verse from 22 to 24 that says, This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree the Most High has issued against my Lord the king. You will be driven away from people. God says, I'm going to drive you from people. And you're going to live with the animals. Why with the animals? Because you think like one. You act like one. Your whole disposition is like one. 
And since you're going to act like an animal, I'm going to let you live with them. Because you don't act like I created you. You don't act like I made you. You don't act as if I am your maker and creator and that you can worship me. No, you have allowed yourself to be like the tree. So let's make you an animal associated with the tree. You will eat grass like cattle and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign. What, what, what is this lowering all about? What is it that God has to bring individuals down? Because it's only in the coming down, in the humiliation that People recognize who God really is. Nebuchadnezzar, until you recognize who I am and that I'm sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes, that's what I do. Verse 26, the command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Why does God have to lower us before we can acknowledge that? Why don't you just come out the box running? Hey, our God reigns. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion forever, and power forever. Amen. Why can't we do that? Why do we have to crawl? Why do we have to beg? Why do we have to become needy? Help, Lord, for us to recognize who Jesus is. Nebuchadnezzar, seven times is going to pass. And when you get it, if somebody's in your house right now, shake them and tell them, you need to get it. Whether it's your wife, don't shake her too hard. She might slap you. Shake her. Your children say, you need to get it. Until you recognize And when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, king, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right. And your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. Boy, when you get in right relationship with God your prosperity continues. But until you get it right, until you walk in humility, until you lower yourself and acknowledge who God is and show that to God and let it be demonstrated to the people, oh, you're in for a good beating. Humble yourselves. It's what the Bible says. You can either humble yourself or you can let him humble you. <laughs> Which is better? Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. That in due time he may exalt you. Look at Daniel 4.28. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later. A whole year. A whole year went by, and I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to come back here. But I'm going to pause right there. Because he, he lived and crawled and did all of this as an animal, lived as an animal for a while. God gave him a space to repent, but he didn't. 
a space to get his attitude right, but he didn't. 12 months later, 12 months later. <laughs> Let's go on to the New Testament because I told you everything in Genesis starts out a serpent. It becomes an elevated spirit and that spirit is seen in men who arrive at certain positions in life. The book of Acts chapter 12 verse 21. Here is one. His name is Herod. Oh my Lord. He was around when Jesus came. He was a big boy. He thought he had it going on. And he just kept increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. And when the day arrived, you have to read it before to know what that day is. But Herod put on his royal robes. The dude dressed himself up in royalty. Sat on his throne. Attitudinal. When people are attitudinal, you can just see it. <laughs> you can just see it. Look at that dude over there sitting on his throne. Look at that lady over there with the big hat. Just see attitudes. He's sitting on his throne and he made a speech to them. Brother, you better dare watch what you say. And it starts with what you think of yourself. As a man thinks, so is he. And Herod is making this speech and the people gave him a great ovation. Mm, mm, mm. And they began to shout, it's the voice of a God. Not of a man. Oh Lord, please don't accept the honor of being a God. Don't act like one. Don't put yourself in that position. Man is man. God is God. Don't get it twisted. Come on, tell somebody in your house. Don't get it twisted. Tell them wake up. Don't get it twisted. Man is man. God is God. But when he spoke, Herod spoke. They said, the voice of a God, not of a man. And because Herod did not correct them, oh, Lord, he was struck. The angel of the Lord struck him with sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving the glory to God. So look what happens to him. So he was consumed with worm, worms and died. There's hell in taking God's glory. There's death in taking God's glory. Don't do it. Don't allow anybody to exalt you, put you on a pedestal, and applaud you, laud you. Oh, you're the greatest. That spirit's in the world. We see it in China. <laughs> it's in China. Let me ask you, could it be in the United States of America? Could it be? Could it be? Is there a little seed that might be planted in the buds growing in our nation that we're seeing indicators of glory being taken from God and given to a man who wants to be something and somebody. I'm just asking. I'm just Asking. The reason I'm asking is because, I'm not making this up, you can go research it. President Trump declares, I am the chosen one.
Trump again plays on messianic claims as he embraces king of Israel title. I don't know his motive. I don't know what he's, why he said it. But it just has intonations of somebody who is endeavoring to be more than they are. I'm not making any accusation against the president. I'm not telling you his motives. I'm just saying that statement scares me. It makes me raise my eyebrow in light of what I see going on in the country, in the world, in the scripture. Men who endeavor to scratch to the top and become more than they really are. Now that was spoken on August 21st. You see it there, the date's right there, 2019, a year ago. The next day after he said that, another news report comes out on CNN. One is New York Post, the other is CNN, and they report something similar. And they say Trump is either trolling everyone or thinks he is like a god. CNN picks it up and says, oh, our president is either trolling, singing about himself and got a rhyme going on about himself, or he thinks he is like a god. Don't accuse me of accusing. I'm just saying, is that spirit in America? Is it like one of the movies called Coming to America? Can it be? Going back to Daniel 4, 34 and 35, Nebuchadnezzar's confession, after he got through crawling, after his nails grew out, no manicure, looking like an animal, acting like an animal, drooling at the mouth, eating grass. I'm talking about a man who was at the top and came down and God brought him down to do all this. When God got through with him, this is what he said. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. This is what needs to happen to so many of us. We need to get our minds back. Get your sanity restored. You're crazy. Hmm. Then I praise the Most High. See, as long as you fail to praise God, you're insane. Then I praise the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. God, he does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? Man is man. God is God. They will never be mixed. The only God and man that you see coming together is in Jesus Christ. Hmm. Let me come on in and get to our text, our theme, the gospel of the red dragon. I want to show something to you and with you, share it with you. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 8 where Paul makes a statement as we go through from Genesis through the Bible. We see this spirit of Antichrist, spirit of a dragon. 
By the way, dragon is used in the scriptures 13 times. You know where, where it's used? It's used in the book of Revelation 13 times. You know what 13 is about? It's a very unfortunate number. It's a number of evil. Pay attention to the, to the numbers. Stop playing them. Pay attention to the numbers. It says, from you the Lord's word has spread out not only through the province of Macedonia and Greece, but also to the people everywhere who have heard about your faith in God. We don't need to say a thing about it. Here is the principle that I want you to see. That those who were preaching, sharing the word of God were sharing the gospel and it was like a seed sown or a feather in the wind that spread. The nature of a gospel is that once it's preached, it will spread. I'll pay attention because I'm coming on in. It will spread. That's the whole purpose of the gospel. In the book of Acts, they spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's called the diaspora. Study it. That when the gospel went out to the 12 apostles, it spread first in Jerusalem, then Judea, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. It spread. Now, what am I trying to say? That everything that is real, everything that is genuine, everything that God is doing, Satan desires to copy. There's the gospel of Jesus Christ, but also in Revelation, there's the gospel of the red dragon. He's fighting against the woman and the man-child. He's coming against the church and the Christ. In order that his gospel may be spread. <laughs> right now in China, they're changing the Bible. So that it lines up with the Communist Party, the Red Communist Party, Red Chinese Communist Party. They're right today, today. And the Bible that God has given to us is being ripped up, changed, tattered, taken out, burned, got rid of because they're writing a gospel that lines up with their communist faith. Can that happen in America? Well, who would have thought that something that started in Wuhan, China could spread and come over here and be worse here than there. Is it not possible that what they are doing with the church and the gospel of Jesus Christ, tearing up the Bible, disavowing it, ignoring it, changing it, altering it, just like was done in Genesis. That's what he told Eve. Hath God said? Hath God said, Adam? And when they quoted what God said, it was not what God said at all. They altered it. They changed it. That is the spirit of the dragon. That is the spirit of the serpent. The serpent was talking to to Eve and changed the gospel. Can you not understand that as China is changing the gospel, can we not see here in America that we're making the gospel irrelevant? It's being watered down. 
Sin is no longer sin. It's dysfunctionality. Anybody is saved. Everybody is saved. Believe what you want to believe. Whatever you say you are, you are. It's okay. We are being told not to judge. You can't judge me. I have my own religion. I have my own way of serving God. You can't judge me. And so nobody touches anybody. We don't touch in the White House. We don't touch in Congress, Supreme Court, nothing, nothing. Everything is good. Everything is wonderful. That kind of gospel that comes from the red dragon, what they're doing right now is spreading and is spreading as quickly as coronavirus and it's being removed as quickly as coronavirus, which is it ain't happening. <laughs> We've got to realize what times we are in. Proverbs 23, 23, write it down. Buy the truth and sell it not. That everyone listening to my voice, what you and I need to do is invest every day in the truth because you don't know when that Bible is going to be taken from you. You don't know when it's going to change. You don't know what executive order can come out of the White House or out of Congress or out of the Senate that will change your life, your Christian life, forever. You had better buy into the Word of God. Make an investment there to read it, learn it, put it to memory, because if they take it from off your table, thank God, my word have I hidden. Where? In my heart. Can't take that. And what's in my heart is going to keep me from sinning against thee. Mm, mm, mm. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, Retain the standard of sound words. Retain them. Keep them. Guard them through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. I want to close with this warning. I think this is the last time I'm going to preach on the red dragon. Today was the red, the gospel of the red dragon. But I want to give you the scripture. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 through 6, for the time will come, are we there? When men will not put up with sound doctrine. The time will come. I wonder if that day is here. I wonder if he, we are living in that day. Now, 2020, we came into the new year looking about, whoa, 2020, happy new year. Oh, oh, oh. Could it be that in 2020, the time will come more than ever when men will not put up with sound doctrine? Instead, to suit their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I, Paul says, am already being poured out like a drink offering. Father, I thank you for the time that we've shared I pray blessings upon this word that we'll hear it again and again and again. Thank you that it's on social media that we can go back to it and listen, 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 listen. Play, 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 play. Hear again and again. Repetition. Bless every heart, every Christian, every believer that they might embrace your word while we have the opportunity to know the truth and that truth can set us free. May we put our arms around it and hold it very tightly in Jesus' name. Blessings to you. Love you. Amen.